this little mini PC might be my favorite of all the mini PCs that we reviewed so far. It's not perfect by any means, but the RDNA 2 graphics, the 8-core AMD processor, I mean, this thing packs a serious punch. You can game on it and do all kinds of things, and it's a it's a tiny little package. But wait, let's let's hold up for a second. Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and this is the B-Link SCR6 Pro 7735HS. Wow, that's a long name. While this unit still has some quirks to it, I definitely think that this thing is a great little package, and I'm gonna show you why in this video. Now, one of the big reasons that we're doing this unit is because we previously reviewed the B-Link GTR6. We also looked at a Minis Forum UM690, which was uh, not very good. And so folks asked us to go look at this B-Link one, and uh, I decided yes. I just wanna say thank you to the STH YouTube members for supporting this channel and allowing us to go buy things like these units so we can actually do independent reviews and not just uh, you know get vendor sponsored reviews. I think that's an important editorial thing and something that we pride ourselves on. If you wanna support the YouTube channel, you can do that down below. Let's get to the hardware. So the first thing is just size. Uh, this is a 13th gen NUC Pro, which uh, you can see is just slightly smaller than this unit. They're pretty similar size, but definitely is, you know, the NUC is a little bit smaller. And then the other thing is the B-Link GTR6 that we reviewed with the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX. You can see that that is, considerably bigger actually. The other thing that you might be picking up on camera is that the B-Link GTR6 is this like really nice like metal and it's black and it looks like kind of really cool. The uh, the B-Link SCR6 Pro is uh, is is this weird kind of like greeny color. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Hopefully you guys can kind of see the difference when you put it up to a black unit right next to each other. And if you do want to change the appearance, B-Link also offers a different cover other than this one, which is like this bluish, like navy blue or something color. And so you have like a green and navy blue you know i have no idea guys this is one where i wish b-link went all out and just did like a black chassis with like a red top or something like that something that just would look cool this isn't that bad but i just kind of feel like that would be one of those things that b-link could do a little bit better okay so looking at the front of the unit you're going to see that we get some amd stickers because you i guess need those and then you also get two usb type a port and those are always kind of fun. The Type-C port though is a big differentiator between this unit and something like the previous GTR6 and it's more similar to what you might see on something, I don't know, like a NUC or something like that because this is a USB 4 port. That means that you can have a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure and connect that no problem. You might notice that we have a Razer Thunderbolt 3 enclosure here and that's not a coincidence. We are gonna show you this with an eGPU later. You also get a combo headset jack and the power button. And of course, because this is a B-Link unit, you get a clear CMOS button. I don't know why you need one. At least this one is recessed so you don't hit it accidentally. Now, of course, having a USB 4 port that you can do things like do an eGPU with, with Thunderbolt, also you can drive a display off that. That's all great and stuff like that, but a lot of folks just want an HDMI monitor or, you know, hooks up to a TV or something like that. So we do get on the back of this unit two HDMI ports. We also get two more USB type A ports. One is USB 3 port, and then we also get a USB 2 port. Rounding things off, we get a LAN port. Now this is a Realtek LAN port. It's not an Intel LAN port and it's just something to know. And you would think that everything in this is going to be real tech, but that's uh, that's not the case. Now, before we get inside this unit, I just want to kind of show you just the other sides. You know, we have vents on both sides of this. The bottom, I really like these feet that B-Link has. They do something that Minis Form does not do where you have the little uh, screw holes that go kind of through there. So you don't have to like rip and replace the feet. And these are big Pretty darn solid, I really like that. Now getting inside this unit is super easy. There are four screws that you just kind of pop open and you're ready to go. One screw is a little bit shorter, which is kind of weird. And you also get, of course, the normal B-Link how to get into BIOS on the bottom of this. But then once you do that, there's a little tab that's a B-Link feature and then you're inside. And popping the cover off, you can see that we have our main CPU fan up here and then uh, you know, a little plastic cover on this side. Okay, now that we're inside the system, let's take a look at what we have. And this is something that's different than like when we saw the Minis Forum UM690. This is a really good example, right? So the first thing is that we actually have a nice little fan here. That fan is here to cool our DDR5 as well as our SSDs. And speaking of SSDs, there are a couple features in here that I think are worth noting. The first is that there is a two and a half inch drive bay that's easily accessible. You simply get a drive, and then you put it in here and you're ready to go. Now, one thing I'm not crazy about with this design is that when you have the SSD here, you're covering up the fan to a large extent. And I don't like the idea of covering up the fan in this because that's a huge value add item. But if you do just need that extra storage, 
Then uh, I guess I guess you could put a SATA SSD in here, but you could also just replace the NVMe SSD with something bigger. So that's an option too. Now to get this cover off, you need to undo a total of three screws. The one little challenge though, is that, well, one of the screws is pretty accessible. The other screws, you can't use your LTT screwdriver creator edition uh, to get there. You actually have to use something that's a little bit thinner to be able to access down into the recesses where these screws are. So I just kind of wish that they were a little bit easier to access since this is a user serviceable area. Now, once you get those screws off, you can just open up this chassis and uh, what you'll see is that we have the connectors for the SATA SSD as well as for the fan. And uh, when you're inside, there's only a couple features here, right? The first thing is that you'll see that we have a SSD here. This is an M.2 SSD. And in this particular system, we got a Micron 2400. It's marketed as a fast SSD, but frankly, it's not a super fast SSD. So it might be something that if you do really want SSD performance, you would go get a different drive. Um, it's, it's frankly a little bit anemic. And the other thing is that this system only came with a 512 gig SSD. You know, these days, one terabyte SSDs are so inexpensive, even decent, decently performing ones, that I just kind of feel like the difference between a 512 and a one terabyte SSD is just not that much. And I just wish that, you know, B-Link just started going with full terabyte drives. Now under the Micron SSD, we get our Intel AX200, which is a Wi-Fi 6 solution. It's not a Wi-Fi 6E. I feel like on this box, it should be a Wi-Fi 6E. It's like an AX210 or something like that. The DIMMs are made by Crucial, which is a Micron brand. So they are name brand dims. And I really like that. We get two 16 gigabyte modules. And if you want to, you can replace these with 32 gig modules for a total of 64 gigabytes of memory. These DDR5 modules run at DDR5 4800. And so they're not necessarily the fastest modules out there by any means. And a lot of folks ask, well, why don't you make them go faster or anything like that? And I think one of the reasons is just stability. The 4800, uh, you know, is stable. And so that's the reason I would keep them at 4800. So now that we've taken this thing apart, let's talk about performance. Okay, so let's talk about this AMD Ryzen 7735HS processor. This thing is absolutely awesome. We get eight core 16 threads. We also get the AMD Radeon 680M graphics. Now this may sound like it's a huge upgrade over the AMD Ryzen 9, 6900 HX that we looked at previously. Uh, and I'll just say that it's it's really not, right? This is still the same, basically, RDNA 2 graphics, the similar quarks and all that kind of stuff. So there are a little bit of differences in terms of frequencies and stuff like that, but it's not enough that you're really gonna see a huge delta. And that's not what we saw when we benchmarked this. It was a little bit slower than the 6900 HX GTR6 that we reviewed. But on the other hand, I will just say that um, it's not enough that I would consider performance to be the big differentiator between the two of them. One thing that I do wish that B-Link did was allow you to do a little bit more in BIOS in terms of tuning. So you don't have to use like an APU tuning utility or something like that. Okay, now one thing that folks ask all the time about these little PCs is how do they perform when you're doing gaming? And we've acquiesced and for some of these that are kind of more consumer focused, we're definitely gonna go and start looking at that. So what we're using is League of Legends as our gaming title. We're gonna do 4K and also 1080. Okay, so now let's fire up League of Legends and just kind of see how we're doing. You're gonna see that we are in that say 45 to 60 FPS range in general. And this is 4K guys. So this is definitely a higher resolution thing and we have very high settings here. Uh, I, I think that's, that's very good but it's also right on that border of something that I would say is definitely playable, but is not like overly insane, right? The one thing I will say is that this is exactly where we saw that Minis Forums UM690 box with, which is essentially a very similar, you know, CPU, APU to this thing. And you saw that this thing really struggled in that test. So this is one where the B-Link is doing much, much better than the Minis Forums. And then we're gonna go and let's switch over to the 1080. And you're gonna see that our performance is pretty good. We uh, start out around 200 FPS, but realistically, while you're playing the game, you're gonna see maybe 110 to 140, 145 FPS, which is just absolutely awesome at 1080. Uh, it looks great. And frankly, I think that this is more than playable. This is something that I think almost anybody would be happy with. So that is really the impact of that second cooler on the bottom of the system for the DDR5. You're seeing that we're not getting throttling a DDR5 like we got on the Midis Forums unit. And so that is something that I say is this, this game experience is way better on this than the Minis Forum one. And I know that the Minis Forums folks have a UM 
690 upgrade with the same processor that's in here. But frankly, I would get this over the Minis Forums any day just because this actually has proper cooling, whereas the Minis Forums one does not. Now that might be a little bit different than other things that you've seen online, uh, but we've showed you the side-by-side -side where you can see the difference between the Minis Forums one and this one. Same settings, 4K, and you'll definitely see the difference in gaming performance because of that DDR5 speed slowdown and overheating that you get on the Minis Forums versus this that has proper cooling. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption and noise of this thing because that is definitely an awesome part about this, okay? So first thing, uh, the power adapter. This is a Hunt Key, it's a 120 watt power adapter and we actually have some markings here for like certification and stuff. I think this is one of the better power supplies that we've seen. Okay, so let's talk about the idle power consumption and noise. So this thing, if it's on, you're probably not gonna notice it. The noise floor in our studio is about 34 dBA and what you'll see is that this thing gets up to about 35, maybe a little over 35 dBA when I'm not speaking. And the idle power consumption is awesome. It's just over six watts, six watts, something like that. And so this is a pretty darn low power solution. Okay, so let's see if we can get this thing to uh, heat up a little bit. And first what we're gonna do is we are now running a CPU benchmark on here. You'll see that we went into the 60 watt range at first like 62 watts or so. And then we're hitting a more steady state somewhere in that 54 watt range. Okay, I've let this thing run for about a minute now and a couple things. So first off, you're gonna see that we're still at about that 54 watt range. So this thing is just kind of sat flat here. In terms of noise, we're getting to about 36 dBA here and I'll let you listen to it just so you can hear the mic is uh, literally right there. So under load, we're only going from about 34 up to about 36, 37 dBA, which is not too bad. This isn't a very annoying box by any means. Now the exhaust of this is definitely getting a little bit hot. It's uh, You can certainly feel it. But on the other hand, this thing's doing darn well. I mean, we're still sitting at about 54 watts of power consumption. I would say from a power and cooling standpoint, this thing is pretty darn good. What I'll also say though, is that we did see a momentary peak up a little over like 85 to 90 watt range uh, when we are doing just some other workloads and the general thing is that you will see that this thing will down clock into that maybe 50 to 55 watt range. I think B-Link did a good job with the fans here. Now for all these videos, I love to have a key lessons learned section. And for this, we've already tested things that are very similar to it because we've tested, you know, the GTR6 version, which had, you know, our DNA to similar, I mean, CPU cores, which is everything was very, very similar. So other than the name change, I don't really think that the CPU or GPU performance was that exciting. I think that the fan was the uh, secondary fan that's cooling like the memory and the SSD. I think that was really exciting and we saw the performance impacts of that. But the bigger one I think I wanna talk about is really the USB 4 capability because the USB-C port that's on the front of this system, it has a couple of cool features. And what you'll see is that we've plugged this in using this red cable so that way I can keep track of these things. And you'll see over here that we have a working monitor and that monitor does not have another cord in or cable in. So with one cable, we're sending data and power to the monitor, which is always nice. But what else can you do? Well, you could just set this up normally and have HDMI output, and then you could have a powered monitor and powered over HDMI, which is always fun, but not overly exciting, right? So what would be more exciting? Oh, I have an idea. This box under here is of course our Razer eGPU box, and let's use that. And sorry guys, for some reason, I have only like the world's smallest Thunderbolt cable here, but we're just gonna go and we're gonna power this thing up. You're gonna see that the fans have started to spin up. The GPU, eGPU has connected, and we now have an eGPU solution. Now I will say that the Intel Arc A770 that's in here has been reasonably stable, but it has not been as stable as something like an NVIDIA GPU. So I'd probably want to go and use an NVIDIA GPU, but maybe you wanted to use like the AV1 encoder that, uh, or QuickSync or something like that instead of the AMD solution. If you wanted to do that, well, you now have an eGPU solution to do it because you have USB 4. Again, I, I don't know, like this is a very small uh, PC and a very large eGPU solution. So I don't necessarily know if I love the idea of this, uh, but on the other hand, you can do it, which I think folks are gonna say, hey, that's awesome. This is a really flexible solution. So overall, I really like this unit. It's relatively small. It's not that much bigger than a Nook, still so that kind of same general size. I would say it performs better than what we saw from the Minis forums, one that's a little bit bigger because they have the second fan here. So we're not getting things like seeing our DDR5 overheat while we're playing games and stuff like that. So this feels like it's a much better solution. And just using it as is, if you're gonna hook it up to a TV or something 
something like that and you just want to game on that, but you can go play esports titles like League of Legends. We were at very high settings. We're at 4K and it's still relatively playable, even though it's a little bit under 60 FPS for most of the gaming session. Now, if you want to go all out and you want a lot of performance, you can just drop that to 1080, even on very high settings. We were over 100 FPS during our gaming session, which is absolutely awesome. And it makes this extremely playable. And if you want to play something that's higher end, or maybe you want to do some higher end video editing or something that you just need a beefier GPU or you just need different GPU features, well, you have the eGPU option because you have this USB 4 port. The one thing though, that I think that is a huge miss in the system is the fact that it only has a 512 gig NVMe SSD. One terabyte NVMe SSDs these days are like 50 bucks. You can get two terabyte you know, PCA Gen 4 ones that are about the speed, if not a little bit faster. And you know, you're talking about something that's like an $80 one. So like, are they saving 50 bucks or something to give you a half terabyte versus a terabyte? At this point, let's just do the terabyte SSD in these units. I think that the support for these units is probably not what you wanna see. I'd love to see things like BIOS versions and stuff like that on a page that actually get refreshed because I think that that's just an important thing for selling devices like these. And that is a huge difference between something like this and a Project Tiny Mini Micro series where you have you know Dell, Lenovo, and HP that are putting out systems on a regular basis. Also things even like an Intel Nook where you do have a you know Intel putting out updates on a regular basis. Overall though, I do really like this box. So if you're in the market for a mini PC that's based on AMD Ryzen and or DNA2, I think this is an awesome option. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the B-Link SER6 Pro. This is an awesome box. And if you did like this and you wanna see some of the other systems that we're gonna go review, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications, check out some of the other videos we have. And as always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.